Hello, welcome back to my channel. As you click this, note that there's a part one of this series, the litigation law practice. I will leave a link at the end of this video for part one or look in the description below for that link. Before we begin, please do me a favor if you have not yet, click that subscribe button down there. It helps my channel a lot and I will truly appreciate it. Welcome back. I am Dean Rod Vera. I am a law school dean and today in this video, I will explain part two of the litigation law practice. As a recap, in the previous video, I broke down the parts of litigation law practice into percentages. I said in that video that it's 60% writing, 30% research, and now we will begin with 20% appearing in court. Appearing in court is what you see in the movies and on television. It looks glamorous, people are wearing suits, they look the nicest, they have nice briefcases, they go to court, the courtroom looks nice, the judges looks proper, but that's not the real thing. Depending on where you practice, some courtrooms could be full of people, full of files, and full of dust. The hardest part of going to court is waking up early. Depending on where you live, the, court, the courthouse may be an hour away, two hours away, depending on the traffic and distance. And then, you have to pick the right clothes. Did I wear this suit in the last hearing? Did I wear that tie again? They wear that dress again. That may be minor, but if that's what you do, you have to look like you can afford more clothes. The good thing about the Philippines is that lawyers can wear Barong Tagalog, the national attire for men, and it can look the same day in and day out. Of course, that if you've woken up, dressed up, eaten breakfast, you're on your way to the court. Now you have to make sure that you brought all the right files. Some litigation lawyers have many cases in their itinerary. You have to make sure that it's this case that you bring for this hearing. Of course, as a litigation lawyer, you have to know travel time or commute time. If you're gonna book an Uber or a Lyft or a Grab, you have to make sure that there's enough time for you to book the ticket or book the, the Grab, Uber, to make sure that you're in court in time. Sometimes hearings are first thing in the morning, whether it be 7.30 or 8.30 in the morning. And then when you get to court, you have to check in. You have to tell the clerk of court wherever, or whoever's in charge of the, the docket to say, hey, I'm here for case number so-and-so. I'm checking in, telling you that I'm here and I'm ready for the hearing. Then the hardest part of going to court is waiting your turn. In my experience, I've been number 40 in the case of 80. Patience is the key and going to court is the lock. So now, it's your turn to appear in court. Your case is called going to speak in front of the judge or argue against the other lawyer, your client is watching you. Aside from that, everybody else in the court is watching you. All the other litigants, the staff, and most importantly, the judge. You have to know the right terminology. There's a lot of speeches there. There's a lot of keywords that you have to say. Objection, your honor. May it please the court. When you get to litigation law practice, you will get to know this terminology. So, if you want to go into litigation law practice, let's say you're a young lawyer just straight out of the law school or you're in law school right now, make sure you remember all that you've read and all that you've studied, not just in law school, but in the preparation for the hearing. Why? You are going to argue against the opposing counsel or with the opposing counsel. You're going to have to say no to everything the other guy says. You have to counter whatever the other lawyer will say, and that takes not skill, that takes a lot of research which was 30% of litigation law practice. Now, when there is an argument in court and the opposing counsel is going for your gun, going for your guts, you gotta keep your cool. I believe that judges are more impressed with those who do not shout and do not scream in court. In my view and in my experience, the louder lawyer gets, the less he knows. So going back to the percentages, it's 60% writing, 30% research, 20% court appearance, and about 10% speaking in court. Now let's talk about the last 5%. It's respecting the judge. In reality, you always have to get the good side of the judge. You may argue with him, but never point out that he's wrong. Just point out that the law is on your side, jurisprudence or cases are on your side to support your argument, and that your client has a good case. If you will disagree with the judge, disagree with respect. Give him the proper honor that is given by his title as a judge, and speak in a clear and concise manner. If the judge stays with his point, concede and utter the words, I submit your honor. It just means that you are accepting your faith, not necessarily accepting that the judge is correct or the other side is right. Now, 
why would anyone go to litigation practice? There is a lot of benefits going into the litigation law. You have a high volume of fees. You have an acceptance fee. You may have a success fee if you win. And you can bill by the hour or by the time spent or by the things that you have done for the case. Such as you have a writing fee, a complaint fee, a motion fee. All these fees can add up and can be financially rewarding. Aside from collecting the fees, litigation in cases may take years. Imagine charging the client for four, five, even eight years for one single case. If you have time, I have put in the description below links to other videos on other types of practice in law. Hi, please do me a favor and smash that like button. It'll help me a lot and it will trigger the YouTube algorithm. Now, if you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. If you don't, my dog will eat this exam booklet and that student has to repeat his final exam again.